Hello and welcome to the finalization of the Bonanza mini bike build. At this point, the bike runs. It's ugly, but it, everything's dialed in. I'm happy with most of it. There's a couple things I need to adjust, but as of right now, the plan is to fully blow it apart and finalize everything, get the paint right, and just get it fully dialed because I want to actually finish projects versus leaving them like 80% done, like this in the PW, where they just kind of like sit in limbo forever. Color scheme, I'm not going to tell you just yet because it might not work out as well as I think it's gonna work out. We're gonna use the other engine I have. I have two of these GC160s. The one that I did the crankshaft swap on is the one we're gonna end up putting on this because it's got all the seals done, it's got the time belt done, like it's serviced and ready to go. Whereas the one on it is running strong, but it hasn't had any of the servicing done. Other than that, I already have a bunch of parts on order. It's taking forever to get anything, which is not totally surprising given the end of the year madness. From where we sit right now to the end of this episode, I wanna have it like fully done. I do, honestly I might be overestimating my ability and also underestimating how much time it's gonna take. Gonna go ahead and start with the seat and the gas tank. Gonna go ahead and remove the old ones. I have a couple different options for gas tanks. So I'm gonna just mock them up, see what I like, and then make a decision. Stupid. The seat is gonna stay the same. I don't wanna run the longer one because it doesn't allow me to run a proper fuel tank with the little plastic one I just took off and also with the cylinder style that I had originally. Both of them had like zero capacity. I'd have to put fuel in it every single time I ride it, which I only ride it for like 15 minutes at a time. So that's pretty unacceptable. We're automatically going with the smaller seat because it's the only one I have. And we have three options for tanks. So this is option one, which doesn't particularly fit all that well. I can make it work, kind of use your imagination, what it would look like if I actually make it fit. But yeah, just a little JR50 tank. It would take a little finagling to get that to work, but not the end of the world. Second option is this tank, which does actually fit the frame and would work pretty easily. That's a Gemini 80 tank. Yeah, more or less like that, which looks pretty good in my opinion. And then lastly, just a generic Chinese, what they call a Z50 tank, but probably isn't because it's massive, but it would look something like that, which also doesn't look terrible. It's a little large. That one does actually fit the best of all three. And I think that's also the largest capacity. Gonna go ahead and get the engine off. We are still using some of the components on this engine, but the engine itself we're no longer using. I have another GC160, the one I did the crankshaft replacement on. That one I'm referring to is in a much better condition, has every serviceable part replaced and is ready to go. So this one has had almost no service aside from spark plug and oil. So I don't know what the internals look like. I don't know what any of the bearings look like. All that, it's all question marks. So while this engine has been strong, I would rather go with the Sherbet. We are obviously gonna use the exhaust and intake and I'm gonna use the side cover. The other one is red. I'm trying to stay away from red because it's not gonna look right with the other colors I'm gonna go with on this bike. So I'd like to also get rid of the air filter and breather filter there. But in any case, I'm gonna steal this cover off of here. But before I do, I have to mark where the footrests go. Elaborate on that real quick and then we'll get to pulling this apart. I've never liked these jack handle footrests. They're position-wise okay, but they're just not really right. And also if you lean too much, these will dig into the ground and throw you off the bike. I haven't had it happen on this bike, thankfully, but you really want foldable footrests. So I have these Harley, I think they're highway or passenger footrests, either way. And I'm gonna put them probably down here somewhere. Okay, so pretty easy. Another small thing, there's some misalignment back here. I don't know exactly where this issue has come from yet, but I think it's the adapter to the rim itself is not properly aligned because it rotates fine and then comes to a pinch point and then frees back up and then hits it again. So, you know, so something's obviously not perfectly aligned and it's starting to eat away at this sprocket. So I don't think it's the brake itself because I've already messed with that a lot. I do have other wheels on the way, but they're different size. I think they're gonna fit now because I forgot this chain hits the wheel when it flexes. So there's like a weird little X pattern all the way along and it gets worse right where the uh, misalignment is. So everything's obviously pitched towards the tire a little bit at that point because that's actually when the chain contacts. So lots of little small things to figure out. The tires I ordered are probably not gonna fit, but they're already on the way, so there's nothing I can do about it. And I also don't remember if there's a master link on this or not. I don't think there is. I don't see it anywhere. So we're gonna have to use my chain brake tool that has a bent dowel. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. Let's just pick one, because it doesn't matter. There we go. So 
Not a huge deal. I think at some point it would be nice to get a nicer clutch. This one's like the cheapest one you can get. It has actually held up pretty well, which is surprising. This was all built in that trial stage where it's like, I'm not sure if this is even gonna work, so I might not, might as well not put a lot of money into it. Now that it's proven, a lot of the small issues have already been worked out. It wouldn't be a total waste, and I know I'm keeping this one for myself, so I may buy just a better one before this frame's done. I don't know. More than likely, this engine's just gonna go on some project that I resell. I have another frame that I'm probably just gonna fix up and flip because I don't really need five of them. One is enough, maybe two. More than likely, this engine's just gonna go on one of those frames. Well, it's free, so let's liberate it. I've been doing a lot of cutting and grinding and stuff I really hate doing and I put off as long as possible. The front footrests are gone. The further away side needs to be ground down smooth. This side's fine. This was the original chain guard we had, which is just some cheapy stamped garbage. It sat like that. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really protect anything. So I don't really want this ugly little shield just existing. So what I did is a while ago, I got a rototiller. I really only wanted the engine on, but I kept the belt guard. So what I did is I cut it all up to make my own chain guard. There used to be like a bunch of different sections you can see where I've added in metal and I had to like add in a corner and stuff like that. Like it's not great. It's obviously just still working on it. And I'm not super happy with how large it is. It's kind of just like a big wall. Maybe do like one of those numbers. That's to be determined yet. As of right now, it's kind of just in the air. I'm still working on it. Everything's kind of just in place anyway. Like the engine's just hanging out here. That was a mistake because I was aligned. I really need a uh, bandsaw because these lines are not straight like whatsoever. And neither are my Sharpie marks. Either way, lots of work to be done on this. I have to get the tires off right now. Well, specifically the rims because I need to send them off to powder coat. In any case, there's a couple things I need to address, so I'm not sure how well you can see it, but the whole tire assembly is shifted to the left, and it looks a little weird. Like, the only reason I had to do that was to get the sprocket and brake to align properly. So what needs to happen is I need to space the sprocket assembly away from the rim. So that's not ideal, especially when the tires I ordered are half an inch wider. If I end up using those tires, this will not work as it sits. Also, it doesn't look good the way it sits, so I'm gonna address it anyway, regardless of whether the tires work or not. Got the two mounts made so far. They just need to weld them on, obviously. There's two more that need to be made on the front for the tank. There's a little adjustment in the tank for this mount, so I'm gonna hold off on making the front two until everything's back assembled, or at least the handlebars, because I don't wanna be able to find out later that you turn the handlebars and it hits the tank. Burn these in two real quick. I had to make some changes to this tank to get it to drop in place, but it's gonna sit approximately there. It's got a weird little gap in the front, which you can kind of see right there, which you know obviously was for the motorcycle. I'm okay with that as long as it all fits together nicely, which I just welded this, so I shouldn't be putting anything plastic on it, but that will work, I think. I don't think I mentioned it. Got the gas tank primed, sanded, all the imperfections filled in. I dropped it once and created a new dent, so I had to fill that in. The gas cap doesn't have a seal, so it's gonna sit here and vibrate and be super annoying and also more than likely splash fuel. I think the brand was Boss and I think the model was Gemini. It might be vice versa. Either way, the parts are like impossible to find, so I can't just order a gas cap seal. So what I did is I ordered a sheet of quarter inch nitrile, which is fuel resistant. So I'm just gonna be making my own seal. I mean, we're really making headway, I think. At least I'm telling myself that. I think I got the intake stuff figured out finally. So this was the intake we were using originally, which was the double flange, which required a flange style carb. I didn't really like it, it worked. However, there wasn't a whole lot of options for clocking the carb and it really just didn't give me many options with any other placement. So I shortened it a little bit. We're gonna go to a spigot mount and then use a rubber hose and then connect the two together. So that'll be a little bit more smooth, I think, and a more refined result. Secondly, the gaskets are the weird thing. So the engine's a square port. We're using a Predator style intake, which does work. However, it's just a little bizarre trying to match these up. The biggest issue I found is you have to use the original Honda square phenolic spacer that goes, you know, there. But in any case, the biggest issue was that when you put these two together, they kind of block each other's airflow. Like the square port's much larger. So what I had to do was I lined them up and then I milled out a bit of the Honda clone intake just to try to port match as best I can. There's really not a lot of material on either end, so I can only do so much, but it's better than it was. And secondly, the other issue is 
matching up gaskets since the spacer requires a square gasket and the Honda clone requires this gasket. You have to kind of just make something work. So originally I was just running the Honda clone gasket, which kind of worked, but it left a lot of room for vacuum leaks. So what I had to do was I took both these gaskets and I overlaid them and then just traced them on gasket material. And the end result is this weird lumpy gasket, which I don't think this exists anywhere else, but it does the job where when you put these two together, there's no area where there's no gasket. So we're still sticking with, a, I think it's a 22 millimeter. The one that was on it was an actual Makuni, which I don't believe because I tried to put Makuni jets in it and they were entirely different. So I think it's probably just copyright infringement Makuni. But in any case, bought two clones. These came from the same vendor about three months apart. This kind of illustrates why I hate Chinese clone crap because everything is different. Like this one has two vacuum ports. This one has one and one of them is not machined out. And let's say the same story. This one has two ports. I don't know why it has two. This one has one, the other one's not machined out. Why? I don't know. And the fact that these came from the same vendor literally months apart is ridiculous. Like, I don't know if they're just trying to skirt copyright infringement laws or what. But secondly, all these carbs come with these crappy little seals that always leak air. So like if you try to run this, it's gonna just cause a vacuum leak. And also these little dongles are just really idiotic. So what I do is I just buy a bunch of the TT125 boots and then I just remove all this garbage and then just run that and that doesn't leak that way. So yeah, I can go ahead and start getting this stuff all back together. Once that's done, the only thing left to do is swap on the powder coated valve cover put a bolt in here because apparently I forgot that. And then the engine's done. But the boot here for the cable seal, I do have a spare one of those, which is this part number here. That there. Up under here, there's the brass fitting th that the cable slides into. You can either trim this one or just order that one. This one doesn't seal where the shit and even has a secondary seal because they know they don't seal. Well, this project has come to a screeching halt specifically because my welder has shit the bed. When everything requires welding, I can't really do anything without it. And what has happened, I think, is that either the transformer or inverter, whatever it has, uh, I think is failing because sometimes it welds okay. The other times it welds on, looks like garbage, and you can just pull the welds off with pliers. The footrests, I have welded on four times, and then I'm just able to knock off the tabs with a hammer, like very lightly. So that sucks. The front gas tank tabs also need to be welded. So that can't be done. And I also axed the chain guard. One, because it wasn't going the direction I liked. It was kind of getting uglier. And also I can't weld it. I figured I'd just buy one since they do make them like it's pretty easy to get a hold of. So I'll just buy a nicer one versus the little cheapy one I did have. I've gone ahead and sanded the frame. It was originally teal. It's only been painted once it looks like. It was originally teal and then they went blue with it. And whoever did the blue paint job actually did a good job. Like it's primed with white, it's primed properly. And it seems like they stripped it like either with the sandblaster or very meticulously with sanding because there's very little teal left. I wish there were more teal because I would be more open to just literally putting Penetrol on this and calling it a day. This is already like a month in the works and I probably have two or three more weeks to go. I was hoping to do this all in one long episode, but I can't control the fact that my welder has died. So it's gonna end up being two parts. I apologize for that. I apologize also for making such a long delay. I'm not doing that weird YouTube thing where you just take off December and January to like chill. I've been working on this this whole time and I don't have a whole lot to show for it, which kind of sucks. But yeah, we're officially SLL, which again, can't control it. So again, thanks for watching and stay tuned. There we go. Can you not do that? Is this a nylon nut? Did I really just put one nylon out of four just to annoy myself? Yes, it's a cheapy welder, but what the fuck was that? I realized I left a bolt out of that. I'm sure that would rattle and be super annoying.